much higher regard. We do have a way every day of voting not to put up with crap. And the way we do that is we vote with our wallets. And if somebody is trying to jack you around, you got the power of the checkbook. And the smartest thing you can do is have your checking and savings account at a bank different than the one where you have your uh, big national credit card. Mm. Boy, that's... That is... Didn't mean to unload on y'all. No, that's, that's that really is, good. That is excellent. Excellent. No, I mean, that's I... just the way stuff is these days. George, yeah, you're, so, you, you know, are you, the you, best you, dim, what, consultant, consultant ever. The best, <laughs> best damn what? No, I mean, I mean, this is practical <laughs> economics. We're, we're not at a point where it's economic theory anymore. It's get down to the street. Uh, we either going to make it through this as a country or we're not. And the bankers aren't doing their part stepping up. Uh, what they're trying to do is they're trying to make up for past income. And you saw the thing today where uh, at the very time when us generous taxpayers had lent Goldman Sachs $10 billion in TARP money, and, oh, by the way, magically converted them from an investment bank to a regular bank uh, <clears throat> at that same period of time, the top execs in Goldman were cashing in $700 million worth of, of stock at relatively high prices. And, and uh, oh, don't get me started on Goldman. That's a whole other long conversation. Whoa. Well, I do want to finish what I started saying before to the listeners. Do get his book, How to Live on 10000 because Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, the reason, the reason that, that uh, I expanded the book was I did uh, the, the shortest ever introduction to how to do home improvements. You know, it, it boils down to only about four basic steps, measuring and, and, and cutting and assembling and finishing. And whether you're doing electrical or plumbing or carpentry, there's only four steps to it. Measure it, cut it, join it, cover it up with something that, you know, a quarter-inch spackle or paint or whatever. Uh, but the point is that it's not that hard to turn your, your personal space into something pretty doggone livable if, if you just get a little confidence and decide, oh, I'm going to have my surroundings reflect the real me. It, the book is excellent. I got it, George. I don't know if you're aware of that or who handles it, but I got it and, and those, I could follow those plans. I can do it now. But the rest well, of it is good. Now, one thing I balked at is, oh, because we live very simply. So, you know, I'm reading through, okay, do that already, do that already. What? Give up milk? Trade it for beer? I love milk. But the way the prices are going up on milk, hey, beer tastes pretty good. <laughs> And, 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 and it may be better for you because you don't put RBST in beer, right? Yes. Right. Yes. So, so, I mean, you know, take it or, take it or leave it. I'm, I'm just trying to give practical advice to people. The real thing to drink is a lot of water because most people are perpetually dehydrated anyway. And that means you're not flushing the toxins out of your system and you're probably stoved up as, as one person I know calls it when you get a little, uh, <clears throat> backed up. Uh, but if you drink enough water, get a little bit of exercise, it's amazing how resilient your body can get. You also um, you also get this really nice feeling of pride when you start getting your hands back on the environment around you. We've all become so not all, but I would say everybody listening on the internet. There's this propensity to become a virtualized person where you don't do anything. I mean, you have great thoughts, you have great intentions, but unless it spills out your fingers as a PowerPoint or as a memo. Uh, you ain't really doing much in the physical world, you know. And then, and then people go home and play video games on top of it. So, a lot of people have just been totally virtualized. But it's really cool. It's it's like rediscovering life when you unplug from virtual land and come back and go, wow, no kidding, that's what a chainsaw can do. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the good thing about it is that it actually recharges the batteries to come back and the, and do the need to do on the computer. Yeah, yeah it really does. Mm -hmm. it, there's there's no satisfaction out there that equals eating your own food grown in your own garden or pointing to a piece of carpentry that somebody comes into your home and says, 
Wow. Well, for example, we we have we have this one room in our in our home, uh, which we call the Trader Vic's room, <laughs> and it's really you, you know what Trader Vic's is, right? Uh, no. Trader Vic's is a very famous chain of restaurants. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah okay. we've heard that. All right. Yeah, and it was it was started by uh, Trader Vic himself back in I want to say the mid 1930s in uh, San Francisco. And it was like the the original Pacific uh, Pacific and, and China cuisine. Uh, basically, you could get you know uh, not poi, but I mean, there's they're they're becoming quite collectible on eBay. The uh, Trader Vic's different cookbooks, and he was also really big on on uh, using genuine dark rum to drink with. Uh, very interesting. So, do you have a anyway. room full of dark rum? <laughs> oh yeah. Of course, but my, my point is that we that we have a room in our house. That's a different room. Um, the the room in our house we call the Trader Vic's room looks just like a Polynesian village. You walk into it, the walls are all reed grass, the roof is thatched. There's, uh, I mean, the, 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 all of the furniture is bamboo, cheap stuff off eBay, right? And the and the thatched walls, I'm sure it's a fire hazard. <clears throat> but the but the uh, the thatching was all done by us taking uh, some of this inexpensive 15 foot uh, six foot high grass fence that you can buy down at Lowe's or any you know Home Depot and places like that, and you could turn that stuff into remarkable interior sculpture type things. And so you can build your own version of this. Now this is this is what I do when I have spare time, right? Um, you you turn your house into a series of what would be TV or, or movie sets so that if somebody were to take a picture of me in the Trader Vic's room and I were to be playing a role where where the scene would be shot inside of a, a, a lean, you know, a grass lean-to in the South Pacific with some soft ocean surf uh, noises playing in the background, it would look believable because that's what I've built inside that part of the house. That is cool. <laughs> yeah, but but so so you know, getting back to that, you know, how to live on ten thousand a year, just because you don't have money doesn't mean you can't have a hell of a lot of fun. Right. How many people want to write a great book? Well, if you're unemployed, guess what? You got time finally, and you don't have to have the current version of of Windows or Windows Seven and you know the four terabytes that I happen to have. You can you can get by just fine because an old Windows 95 machine running Multimate will st- still be able. And by the way, that may both of those may become collectible at some point um, in the future. So if you had a Windows 95 machine, an early version of Ashton Tate Multimate, and a dot matrix printer, you'd have a cheap cheap computing system. But something that 40 or 50 years from now, if you can keep it running in fine ribbons that long, you might have yourself a collectible. Have, have you priced some of the early Commodores and things like that and some of the early Atari stuff that's on eBay? No. See, you got to look for value. Yeah. And values are constantly changing. Well... All right. Oh, well, it's, it's let's time, that, time yeah. for a break. Sorry, I'll, I'll shut up. You guys get Okay, you shut up and we'll... <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll let you talk again in a couple more minutes from now. You're yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. To George Ewer on Beyond the Ordinary, UrbanSurvival.com and PeopleNomics.com. We'll be right back. Okay, Beyond the Ordinary, and we are back <laughs> with uh, Sensei Ewer. <laughs> yes, that's me. Sensei. What is happening Sen- in the Wujo? I, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. What is happening in the Wujo? The Wujo. Yes, the Wujo. Well, <clears throat> I the read thing. there's trouble in the Wujo. Well, there is trouble in the Wujo. Because, now, first of all, you have to understand what the Wujo is. First of all, the Wujo is where people who believe in Wu Wu. That is things beyond the ordinary, but beyond beyond the ordinary. Uh, that's that's in 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 some circles referred to as woo woo. And then then we have the time monks, Cliff, and I'm I'm he's the chief time monk, and myself and Igor are like understudies, and we kind of have an idea what the monk is doing, but 
we're still working on the chance to quiet down all of our internal noise. And what the wujo is, is where the woo-woo meets the dojo. The dojo, of course, being the, the, the Asian place where martial arts are practiced. You with me so far? Of course. Okay. So, when I refer to trouble at the wujo, there are a number of people who have been making outrageous claims around the Internet about how they are shifting timelines on us. And in a, now, this, this sounds really bizarre, but I had a reader ask me, he said, so what do you think about these people? And I won't go into who they are because that doesn't matter. But, but he said, what do you think about these people that say that they are moving us from one timeline to another to avert disaster? And I'm looking, I'm looking around and I'm going, well, let's see. The government's broke, uh, California's bankrupt, General Motors is just gotten taken over by the people. We got Chrysler shutting 800 dealerships and still barely surviving after a shotgun marriage. And we have all the other problems of the economy, including a 100% unemployment rate among my kids. <laughs> Tell me how we're averting disaster. You know, we've got the flu, we've got famine out there because of drought and weather changes and climatological things. And so, anyway, so trouble at the Wucho was my trying to explain that that timelines aren't like what people think timelines are. There, there are there are some folks that seem to believe that timelines are strictly sequential, and what most people have a conceptual conceptually difficult time, pun intended, with is the notion that everything is happening all at once. And it's like a huge bowl of spaghetti more than it's a uh, a ruler with various tick marks on it representing days, hours, months, years, and millennia. It doesn't work that way. It's kind of like time is a big bowl of spaghetti where we all have kind of our free choice, but the future arrives always in a continually changing fashion because of choices made along the way, and one choice or even a huge number of choices made by a small number of people may or may not change the rest of the world's outcome. Is, is that is that clear? That's yeah. absolutely right. It all comes down to, well, we ch- we can change our destiny of one day by one choice that we make or refuse to make because we don't want to change. That right, is very accurate as far as changing timelines, if you wish. But then you get into the, you know, the whole planet is going to ascend.